In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the display settings that are available for the various social media sharing locations in Monarch, and more particularly, show you how to use these display settings in different combinations and in creative ways to, just, to do, um, create intuitive layouts that work well with your website and whatever particular situation um, you're using those buttons for. So a great way to um, start is to look at the inline sharing buttons. Um, and we have them displayed here. And so we're going to be playing with these, with these design settings and creating different layouts. And I'm going to uh, show you how to use those layouts um, in creative ways. OK, so here we have a basic four column structure, right? We have four columns. And we have four networks enabled. And we also have um, display counts enabled. And we have the display um, network names enabled. So we take a look at our settings here, a pretty standard uh, setup. Now the first setting I'm going to play with is the, um, the icon alignment setting, which is going to change where that icon appears within the button. But not only that, it's also going to change the shape of the button because it aligns everything to the center um, and causes things to stack on top of each other, which um, just creates a different look and a different button altogether. So let's change that to centered just to give you an idea of what that does. I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see that now all the items within the, within the button have been centered and stacked on top of each other, causing a larger button and, and giving you uh, the centered appearance. So times when this works, um, when you have not so many networks. So if you only have one to four networks, maybe one to eight networks, um, this, this uh, layout can look good. It can also look particularly good in um, pop-ups and fly-ins because it, it creates this kind of like box effect and looks good within the box container that it's uh, sitting in. So that's one example of um, how the layout can change with just that one setting. Now and to, to continue into the column settings, um, right now we have four columns enabled. Um, and columns, um, it's going to cause the buttons to within each column to adhere to the width of that column. So you can see we have four columns here. And each button within each column is set to 100% width of that column, giving it a 25% width total. So each button here is 25% width. And they're always going to be 25% width because we've chosen a column grid of four columns. If we had only three networks, then there would be an empty space here because there's no network to fill that, third, that fourth column. And if we had three networks, that might be a good, a good chance to use a three-column grid instead of a four-column grid. So you can see there's different situations where different columns make more sense. So let me just show you what I mean there. We go to our networks, take away Pinterest, save, refresh. We now have three networks within a four-column grid. Looks OK. Looks pretty good. But I don't think there's any reason to have this blank space here. Why don't we change to three columns? That makes a lot more sense um, in this situation. So I'm going to change the three columns and save that. There we go. That looks great. It's all set. It all it creates a 100% width box. Um, it looks flush with our with our image and our content. It looks great. Okay. So using that same philosophy, what if we had eight networks? So I'm going to add eight networks and refresh. Now, there's a couple things going on here. For one, eight networks is a lot of networks. And therefore, this centered, um, um, centered icon style, which creates a larger button, could start to get a little bit overwhelming with so many networks. So for one, I might want to change that to the left align style, which causes everything to sit horizontally next to each other. Um, floated to the left, as you can see. So now the icon and the name and the count are all floated to the left on one horizontal line. So that looks a lot better. So a general rule of thumb, if you have a lot of networks, um, you might want to use the left align style. And if you have fewer networks, the centered, um, the centered style can look good too. I'm um, talking about columns again. So we enabled eight networks. We have a three-column grid. So eight networks in a three-column grid creates three rows of three, except we only, only have um, six um, networks in, a nine, um, in nine spaces, leaving this empty space. Since we have eight networks, 
it might make more sense to use a four column grid that would make everything even. A four by two, four columns, two rows, refresh. And there we go, so that looks a little bit better. So there's a situation where a four column grid might work better based on the number of networks you've chosen. As well as when a left align icon might work better based on the amount of networks you've chosen also. Moving on to the content within each button and how that can affect the design. So you can, as you can see here, we have a bunch of different, bunch of, uh, lots of information in our buttons. We have everything enabled. We have share counts and we have um, network names along with our icon. <clears throat> this means that each button has to house a lot of information, but if we were to disable some of that information, that gives the button a lot more room to breathe, which means we have more room to increase the column structure and um, reduce the size of the buttons. For example, if we were to try to squeeze these buttons into a six column grid, it might not look so good because things will start breaking onto a second line. So let me refresh. So now we have six columns. The problem here is that Facebook doesn't fit into six columns, it gets squished. The button gets a little bit bigger. That's because we've tried to fit everything into six columns, but we actually have so much information in each button that the buttons don't always uh, fit all the information. Stuff has to break to the next line. Not the best situation. It might be better if, you're, if you really want to use a six column grid to disable network names. So let me show you what that looks like. I could disable network names. Now everything's gonna fit just fine. It looks a lot better. Using that same philosophy, we could get even more room if we disabled counts and then centered the icon, creating a totally different button. Now we have a centered icon and no counts. The simplest button you could, you could create with uh, Monarch um, allows you <clears throat> to utilize the six column grid just fine. In fact, we could fit a lot more than six buttons here. We could probably fit uh, 10 or more. And if you would like to do that, you certainly can. And this is a perfect situation for this when I've disabled um, counts, I've disabled network names, I've center aligned the icon. Now I have a lot of room inside of each button, which means I can make them a lot smaller and fit a lot more buttons in one row. In this particular situation, it might be good then to use the auto width option. This doesn't use column structures at all. In this situation, each button is only as big as it needs to be, meaning it'll be as big as the content within it. In this case, each button will be pretty small because the content within it is only an icon. The buttons would get bigger if you tried to put more information inside the buttons. So let me show you what that looks like. Refresh, now each button is pretty small. We could fit, we could fit probably 15 networks here um, because we've used auto width, which means it's not gonna make a bigger button to conform to some column structure. It's just gonna use an automatic width and float everything to the left and it allows you to fit a lot of buttons in a row. Um, especially when you disable a lot of the information. Um, you, but you can put that back on. If I could put share counts back on, that'll still fit pretty well. In fact, it'll s still fit in one row. And there you go. So there's um, some different ways you can use the different options to create different styles of layouts. Now we've pretty much covered inline, so now I'm going to, going to touch briefly on pop-ups and show you how these same options can be used in similar ways to create um, different types of buttons, uh, different types of button layouts. Okay, before we can get into um, playing with the pop-up settings, I'm first going to enable that pop-up location. So I'm gonna disable inline and enable pop-ups, and then we can head back to our pop-up settings and start configuring things. So first, let's take a look at what we have right now. So we have our eight networks all display, display with a left align in two columns, um, which is, again is a, is a great choice when you have this many networks. But let's say we only had four networks. Let's refresh and see what that looks like. So we have four networks in a two column grid. That looks pretty good, but there's still some stuff we could do. We could, like I mentioned before, <clears throat> we could play with that centering option. So we could try centering our icons, which will create a bigger button. And um, since we only have four networks enabled, that might look nice. It might actually increase clicks, having these larger buttons. 
And we can also try removing the icon spacing, which will create one big block of buttons, which is a nice effect as well. So we're going from this style to um, larger style buttons, and then they're all going to be connected. So again, you can see this is a, a much different effect. It's a, a much more aggressive effect, but it's also much easier to understand. I mean, it's, it, you can tell right away what, what's Twitter, what's Facebook, what's Google, what's Dig. You might, you know, you might find that layouts like this um, actually increase your clicks. Um, it's hard to say, but you'd, you'd, you could play with these options and check your stats and see for yourself. But I think this is a particular situation where this layout might actually work pretty well. Whereas if you were trying to do this in the inline style um, with eight networks enabled, it might uh, be way too overwhelming. And again, if we had a lot of networks enabled, let's just enable a bunch of networks and go back to this pop-up and see how crazy this is going to look. So like I said, yeah, it's just, it's just way too big, right? We have that many networks. We really shouldn't be using a two-column grid, and we might not want to be using the center align style either. We probably want to use more columns and left align and maybe even take out some information so that all these buttons are not so overwhelming. I want to just, just take some stuff out, make those buttons smaller. That's what these design options are for. So coming back to our pop-up, we could put it back to left align. We could change the columns to three instead of two. Maybe even uh, put it up to four. And then we could disable the network names to give our, our buttons a little bit more room. And save. So there we go. Our buttons now fit. They're not creating that scroll bar. They're not creating the pop-up to be so big that it extends past our browser window. We have these nice little buttons with share counts, and it's a little bit easier to digest. But at the same time, looking at this, looking at the um, hover animation that we're using, and the icon style that we're using, and the fact that we're taking away the space between the buttons, and we have so many different colors here, this is a situation where we might actually want to add back that um, icon spacing, right? When you have a bunch of different networks enabled, and a small, uh, a small button space on a large column grid, like four, it just, it just gets pretty noisy, right? Because there's just so many colors and so many little, little numbers, it's hard to distinguish at a, at a first glance what, what's a button and what's not, right? So in that particular situation, we would probably want to uncheck this remove icon spacing, give those buttons more room to breathe. Let's take a look at that, see that it looks much better. And so yeah, you can play with these, these different design settings and create different layouts that work for you based on the different situations that you're using these different locations in. And that's a basic overview of the Monarch design settings.